So you'll find on page 347 and 348, this is your tax tables for single and married people. Um, what we are going to need to be able to do is when we're calculating payroll, and our assignment for 12-1 was going through and calculating our earnings. And I told you that one of the things that happens when you calculate earnings is if you make a mistake on earnings, everything else for payroll is going to be miscalculated. So it's important that you calculate the correct number of hours that they work, and then the correct number of overtime hours, and then calculate your overtime rate. Your regular rate is always going to be set for you and given to you as a, as a set number but your overtime rate is always going to be time and a half. Okay. What we're going to be taking a look at calculating today is going to be your federal income tax, your Social Security tax, and your Medicare tax. Now, your federal income tax, you are always going to have to use a tax table. Please stop talking. Okay. The tax table will always be given to you. You are never going to have to memorize it. Okay. So I'm giving you that as a heads up. What you need to know is you need to know how to use it. Okay, so even on the test for this chapter, they will give you the tax table, but you have to know how to use it. And the main thing we talked about on Monday, uh, not Monday, Wednesday was when I introduced the chapter, um, it was the fact that different people have different taxes taken out based on whether or not they're married or single. So when we take a look at page 347, that's your tax table for someone who's single. Page 348 is going to be the tax table for somebody who's married. So in order to calculate taxes or calculate payroll, payroll, you need to know if they're single or married. Okay. And then the next thing you have to know is going to be the number of deductions. And you remember my example, I talked about the difference between myself and Mr. Reuter. Okay. He has a larger take-home pay. Even if we got paid exactly the same amount, he's going to have a larger take-home pay because he has more dependents. Okay. or deductions as are listed on the table there. And you can see our deductions go from zero on the left-hand side, and our example goes up to 10 for deductions. Okay. So you would have to go through and figure out married or single and then find the deduction column. And then on the left-hand side for your numbers, you have a number that says at least but less than. Okay. So, for example, when I'm looking at that and I make exactly $720 and I'm single, okay? So, first of all, you need to know I'm single and I make, I made my total earnings is $720. I have um, one withholding allowance. What would my tax be? Look on, look on your chart on page 347. Is it 59 or is it 56? 59. That's where it gets tricky because I said I made at least $720. And you can see 720 is listed there twice. There is but less than and at least. I made at least $720. I made exactly $720. So when you take a look at the other $720, it would have been if you made $719.99. Does that make sense? The number is repeated twice. So in this example, if I'm single, I earn $720. According to my tax table, my federal income tax is going to be $59. So watch out for that if the number given is exactly one of those numbers on the left-hand side. So for calculating federal income tax, that's really what you need to know, is you have to know that how much money they earn, their total earnings is what we did in application one, married or single, and the number of withholding allowances or deductions that they are claiming. And when we take a look on page 346, you have your W-4. Okay, the W-4 is the first form that someone is going to fill out when they get employed. Okay. Basically, they go through and fill it in. They give their name, their address, their Social Security number, and they go through and tell you how many withholding allowances that need to be listed. Okay. The W-4 also stands for the Employee's Withholding Allowance Certificate. At any given point when you are employed by somebody, you can go in and have that changed. So, for example, something happens where you're having too much tax taken out and you want to have less, you can go ahead and change your withholding allowance. 
So it, oftentimes people fill it out before you can get paid the first time, but after that, then they don't need to go through and make a change unless they get married or they have children. That would be one of the triggering factors. But if you realize you have too much or too little tax taken out, you can go into your employer and calculate it. You will find if you have people that have multiple part-time jobs at the end of the fiscal year or the calendar year when you go to calculate your taxes, if you list zero at all of them and you have lots of part-time jobs, it may put you at a higher tax bracket and you might need to have more taxes taken out too. So that will be something else that people will realize when they look at all that money. Okay, so the first thing that we calculate is going to be our federal income tax. And the next thing we're going to do is our employee Social Security and our Medicare tax. And that is explained on page 349. Thank you. Now, Social Security and Medicare is put together in something called your Federal Insurance Contribution Act, or also known as FICA. When you look at your paychecks, you're going to find that you have a number for FICA. Okay, and again, Federal Insurance Contribution Act, that is going to be something that will be on your test. Two taxes that are taken out using FICA are Social Security and Medicare. Okay. Federal tax paid for old age survivorships and disability insurance is called Social Security. Does anyone know somebody in here that collects Social Security? Okay. And it could be that something happened where they're disabled. For example, my mother-in-law had a brain aneurysm and spent many years down at Good Shepherd. She was not able to care for herself, so she collected Social Security. Even though she wasn't retired, but just because of her disability, that would happen. Now, the other one that we have is Medicare tax. And Medicare tax is a tax paid for hospital insurance for people that in order for them to have money to be able to um, contribute for hospital stay. So that, again, is the two taxes that make up FICA, Social Security and Medicare. Those taxes we are going through and reporting separately. Social Security and Medicare are taxes that are paid by both your employer and your employee. Okay, that's an important part because when we take a look at our next chapter, we're going to have to calculate our employer taxes. Employers have to pay taxes because they have employees. So what does that mean? On your paycheck, let's say that you have $50 taken out for Social Security and Medicare. It's a deduction, something that comes off your paycheck. The employer also has to pay $50. So your 50 and their 50 added together would be a $100 contribution towards FICA. So just so you realize, Social Security and Medicare are paid by both employees and employers. Social Security and Medicare is calculated by taking their, your total earnings for the pay period and multiplying it by a percent. And the percent is going to stay the same throughout the whole chapter, but that percent is going to be set by um, an act of Congress. At any time, an act of Congress can go through and change that tax rate so again, that's going to be something that the government's going to set, but it's also calculated on a tax base. Okay, in our accounting class right now, we're going to say that the tax base is eighty-seven thousand dollars. What does that mean? The minute that you make eighty-seven thousand dollars and one dollar or one cent, you don't have to pay tax on that one dollar or one cent over eighty-seven thousand. But if you never make up to eighty-seven thousand dollars, then you're going to pay tax on your earnings for Social Security and Medicare. That's a really important concept. That's going to be something that's going to trick you up a little bit in this chapter going through and trying to figure out whether or not somebody has exceeded the tax base or not. Important vocab term. Um, they will always tell you in the directions if somebody has exceeded the tax base or not exceeded the tax base, or you may have to look at their total earnings. And again, our tax base for the purpose of accounting class right now is going to be $87,000. That's a, a number that I want you to remember. Our Social Security tax rate is going to be 6.2%, and our Medicare tax is going to be 1.45%. Okay? They will give that to you in the directions as well, so that's not going to be something you need to memorize. Just like the tax tables is not something you need to memorize, you need to know how to use it. So when we calculate, when we take a look at our assignment up here, it tells us that we're going to be using our tax rates there, 6.2 and 1.45. Um, and what we are going to be doing right now, we have a simplified, simplified table. But the information they give us, notice we have our employee number, we have our name this time, we have our marital status, and we have the number of withholding allowances. They already have our total earnings calculated. And again, total earnings is our regular earnings and our overtime earnings added together. So that's going to be the total amount that they earned in this pay period. 
So we're going to go through and let's go through and calculate everyone's federal income tax first because then we'll be in our book and we can go ahead and calculate that. So we can see that Eric Bates is married. So what page are we going to go on for Eric? 348. And we can see that Eric earned $1,090. And Eric has two withholding allowances. Remember that the first column is always zero, and then you have one, and then you have two. So what is Eric's federal income tax withholding? I'm sorry, I think I heard it. 50. Thank you. Now, just because we're already in the book, let's go through and do Jason's as well. But Jason is single. So the first thing that we have to do is we have to flip back to page 347, and Jason earned $840, and he has one withholding allowance. 77, thank you. I don't know who shouted it out, but I appreciate that. Marcus, thank you. Now, Christy, married or single? Married, so we've got to flip back again, and $1,020 with three withholding allowances. 31. And then Sharon, just because they want us to be keep flipping back and forth, is single, and 980. And again, once you know how to use the tax table, it goes relatively smooth, but this is an easy spot to make a mistake. So what would we have for Sharon? 79. Now, let me tell you, you can go through and get the wrong person's federal income tax, and the only way you can double-check that is by going back and looking to see if you have the correct person's tax. There's no magical formula at the end to see if you have the right tax collected. And is it important to an employee that you calculated their federal income tax correctly? Otherwise, you have taken too much or too little tax out of their paycheck, which then affects them when they have to file taxes at the end of the year. So it is important that you take the time to make sure you have the correct one selected. Now, Social Security, and what is our tax rate for Social Security? 6.2. So we're going to put in our calculator 1,090 for Eric. And then I'm going to multiply that by 0.062, because that's 6.2% put into a decimal. So I got $67.58. Anyone agree? And now I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to do Eric's Social Security. So I'm going to take 1,090 in my calculator again, but I'm not going to multiply by 6.2%. I'm going to multiply by... 0 0.0145, because i got to move that decimal two places. And that number, your Medicare tax should always be smaller than your Social Security. So what did we get for 1581? Watch your rounding, because you have to use normal rounding. Again, our directions tell us that our Social Security tax is... 6.2% and our Medicare tax is 1.5. So right now you just get to use your calculator and go through and multiply.
I did go ahead and turn on application 12-2. You will find that application 12-2 directly matches what we did on the work together and on your own. It's not different like application 12-1. You do need to have your tax table in order to complete it, which is again why I reiterated very strongly that you need to bring your book with you for this chapter. Um, when you are done working on 12-2, I expect to see people working on their outlines. 